the sun, giver of life and skin cancer. <laughs> but we stay protected. We make sure to wear hats. We wear protective gear when we're going outside for long periods of time. We wear sunglasses and we wear sunscreen. What's so great about sunscreen is not only that it protects you from the sun, but there's some amazing new ingredients that they're starting to add to sunscreen to add that extra layer of protection, mainly vitamin C. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Vitamin C sunscreen products with the ultimate protection of SPF 50. y'all and welcome to my channel balanced beauty lover where i explore all things balanced lifestyle and balanced beauty from the inside out i'm mj and if you're just joining me for the first time hello and if you're coming back for more welcome back today we're going to be talking about sunscreen and not just any kind of sunscreen sunscreen infused with vitamin c that has an spf factor of 50. before we jump into that if you like this type of video and other videos on my channel make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can subscribe for weekly updates and when I'm going to be posting more videos like this and all things related to a balanced lifestyle. Let's take a little deeper into what we're talking about as far as sunscreen, why it's important to have it, what are UV rays, and why SPF 50 or even vitamin C being packed together into one kind of powerhouse product even makes sense. So when we talk about UV rays, we talk about the sun, and the sun shines this light upon us that's on a spectrum. On one side of the spectrum, you have infrared red radiation. On the other side of the spectrum, you have UV rays. But with UV rays, we don't see it and we don't feel it until it's kind of too late. Hence, when you get a sunburn. Now when we start to talk about how UV rays impacts what you're looking at when you're looking at a bottle of sunscreen and when you're trying to figure out what product to buy, you see the SPF. That is the sun protection factor. Now the SPF really only measures UVB rays. So out of 100% of UV rays, UVB rays makes up about 5% of that. It's not a lot, but when you think about what UVB rays does, it impacts the top layer of our skin, the epidermis, and that's where you get sunburned, that's when you have exposure to skin cancer. Now the UVA hits a lot deeper into the skin, and that can also cause issues with collagen damage as well as elastin damage. Now you get into broad spectrum. Now the reason why you want to always make sure to look for broad spectrum sunscreens is because that means it is protecting against UVA rays as well as UVB rays. But if you want to know more details then you can definitely head to my website balancebeautylover.com where I offer a little bit more information around what this ratio is, what are some of the challenges that we have in the US, and maybe some things to look out for when you are looking for broad spectrum sunscreen. So why exactly is SPF 50 so great? So just a little bit of understanding of the protection level associated with those numbers that you see. You have SPF 15 that has 93% protection, SPF 30 comes in at 97% protection, and then you have SPF 50 that has 98% protection. Now, when you hear well, SPF 30 is 97% and then SPF 50 is 98%, that seems like only a 1% difference. Those percentages may seem small, but when you dig a little bit deeper, SPF 30 is allowing 50% more radiation on your skin than SPF 50. Actually, it's recommended that you shouldn't go higher than SPF 50. No sunscreen really is going to protect you 100% from UV rays. And that's because the SPF rating has little to do with its capacity to shield you and protect you from UV rays and really as SPF increases the ratio of UVA protection decreases. The other thing to keep in mind is that the higher the number on that SPF product is, the more chemicals you're going to have in it. They're going to include ingredients that could pose some health risks, could impact you if you have sensitive skin, and some of those ingredients have been even linked to tissue damage, hormone disruption, and could even trigger an allergic skin reaction. There's a really great nonprofit organization called the Environmental Working Group that has a lot of guides to sunscreens and research. If you want to know more about this, especially as it relates to the ingredients that are in sunscreen, how it all impacts your sunscreen products and the types of sunscreen products you are buying. They have a guide to various sunscreens. They've done studies on I think around 1700 sunscreens and they research the products and their UV protection, their UVA to UVA 
UV balance and their sunscreen stability. If you want to find out more, there's a link to their organization in the description. Definitely study up. I learned a lot about sunscreen because of the work that they do. And it especially helps when you're trying to figure out what ingredients are in products and how it could potentially impact your skin, especially if you're having a sensitive reaction to a specific product. Now let's dig into why vitamin C is so awesome. If you're not already including it into your skincare routine and you don't have challenges with hypersensitive skin, vitamin C is just a game changer when it comes to skincare. It's done some wonderful things for my skin. It brightens the skin. It's an awesome antioxidant. It neutralizes harmful free radicals that are in the environment that you're impacted with every single day. It helps promote collagen production. I mean, the list goes on. The one thing I want you to keep in mind before utilizing any of these products that if you are already using a vitamin C serum or some sort of vitamin C something that's already a part of your skincare routine, I would shy away from layering that. The higher concentration of vitamin C can also cause allergic reactions, especially if you have sensitive skin, it can cause breakouts, can cause rashes, redness, the whole thing. And just because something works well and because it benefits your skin doesn't necessarily mean you need more of it. So this is why I was so excited when I started to learn more about vitamin C sunscreen. Um, and then you add in the SPF 50 to it and it just becomes a whole new thing. As I was going through the process of doing Doing my research into this, I did notice there's not a lot of products out there that not only have vitamin C, but also have SPF 50. And also because of some of the challenges that I talked about a little bit earlier, the idea of combining vitamin C with such a high SPF, you have to kind of regulate what that chemical balance is going to be. But there were two products that I found that I actually really like or at least one of them I like a little bit more. Now when I'm looking at any of these products, there are three things that I'm really looking for. Number one, does it give you a white cast as a person of color that is a no-no? I think as any person that's a no-no. The other thing I look for is the texture of it, how it absorbs into the skin. Because my skin is more combination, it's changing, it's evolving throughout the month because of whatever is happening with my hormones. Um, I need products that are going to evolve and change with it. So I need something that feels light and lightweight. And then the last thing I look for is sensitivity. You know, is this going to break me out? Does this feel like this has kind of a smell to it? I don't like chemical smelling types of products, any products, and especially not sunscreen. So let's dig into La Roche-Posay's Anthelios Aox Daily Antioxidant Serum SPF 50. What I really enjoyed about this product Product overall was that it just felt really light it was uh, because it is a serum it was extremely hydrating like my skin was soft for a long period of time even though as I was reapplying it it didn't feel like it was going to be consistently heavy like it was packing on more layers to my skin the other thing I really liked about it was the fact that it absorbed very well I will say that because I'm more of a combination type skin for me I need that hydration I need that moisture if you have oily skin I'm not sure if this is the right product for you but if you do have oily skin definitely try it out see what you think the main con about this oh is the price child oh it's so expensive $45 oh La Roche why now as much as I like this product, I don't know how much I'm gonna be going out and spending $45 every time I need new sunscreen, especially because it comes in such a small bottle and I'm gonna be using a lot of it. But if you're willing to make the investment and you really love the product, I say go for it because it's really all about what makes the most sense for you. So the next one I tried out was the Ulta MD UV Sheer Broad Spectrum SBF 50. Now anybody who is familiar with Ulta MD products they actually have a lovely product line. Um, it's recommended by dermatologists. I've never tried any of their sunscreens, so I was, I was looking forward to it. The company boasts that this particular sunscreen is hydrating, it has a lightweight formula, and it should feel light and airy on the skin and plus absorb quickly. They also say that their facial sunscreen is to offer up to 80 minutes of sweat and water resistance to make this an ideal choice if you have an active lifestyle or you're gonna be out in like humid and hot weather. And they also claim that it doesn't leave a white cast. It was definitely lightweight, it for sure absorbed quickly, but it kind of has a medical scent to it in a way and it's not it's very faint but if you are hypersensitive to smells or 
if you were challenged, like sometimes I am with any sort of like medically scented anything, this may be a turn off for you. The other thing I noticed that was a challenge was the fact that it did leave a white cast. They claim it doesn't leave a white cast. It left a white cast, y'all. I was not, I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed because it does come in cheaper than the La Roche Posay at $34. It's still not necessarily thrifty, but it's not like you're spending almost $50 on some sunscreen. But knowing that it left a white cast on me and I'm of the lighter melanin variety, just imagine what it could look like on somebody who is of a darker complexion. Now I will say for both of these sunscreens, they did work well under makeup. I don't wear a lot of heavy makeup and I think in the summertime, at least for me, I just am not a fan of walking around with like a full beat, but it did work well being out in the sun, especially in Los Angeles. And it hasn't been super hot here, so I'm really looking forward to testing these sunscreens out once we get a little bit deeper into the summer and seeing if it holds up as well as it did when I first tried it out. So whether you decide to check out these products or you choose another type of sunscreen, it's just important to make sure that you are protecting yourself when you're out in the sun, regardless of whether it's sunny or if it's cloudy, making sure to wear either hats, sunglasses, things to protect your shoulders, and reapplying sunscreen adequately every two hours, 15 to 30 minutes before you head outside. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got a little bit more information about sunscreen, vitamin C, what makes these products so potent and amazing. Make sure to also follow me on social. I'm across TikTok, Instagram, and Pinterest at Balanced Beauty Lover. And check out my website, balancedbeautylover.com, where you can find more articles about topics like this and you can sign up for my weekly email until next time y'all all about